Northwest Music, presented by the Cumberland Hotel. We have live music Wednesdays and Saturday nights with award-winning musicians and a menu offering everything from burgers to ribs, wings, and fish and chips. Welcome to Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Normally, we would be coming to you from the Campbell River Studio at Shaw TV. But today, we are here in Cumberland at the Cumberland Hotel, which is the sponsor of Northwest Music. And with me is normally my co-host, Mr. Doug Cox. But I get to interview him today. And the reason is that this is a very unique edition of Northwest Music because we're going to be talking about the Vancouver Island Music Fest, of which Doug is the artistic director. Now, some of you know that he is a world-renowned dobro musician and a studio musician, and in great demand everywhere as a teacher and instructor as well. But for the months of May, June, July, it's all about Music Fest here in the Comox Valley. Now, the other thing that's going to happen during this particular episode is that we're going to talk a bit and then we're going to see a documentary about the Vancouver Island Music Fest that has been produced. And that has been produced by somebody who has a huge and deep background in music. Yeah. Um, Cameron Dennison produced the documentary for us and he lives in Tofino. Mm. And uh, aside from running his documentary company called Strongheart Productions, he also runs a radio station out of Tofino called Tough Radio which you can find on the internet. And I love the station because it's like an old school mm -hmm. 1970s FM radio station. And so it's truly independent as It well. is independent, yeah. yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's, it's amazingly a huge part of the culture of Tofino because pretty well every place you go into in Tofino has it playing in the background. <laughs> um, huh? So it's, it's a really cool station because the DJs there can play whatever they want. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, they can play a whole record if they want. They can go from heavy metal to bluegrass to whatever they want. Awesome. So it's like a real old school station. And I don't know if, if the watchers know this, but most radio stations now, even in places like here, it's um, music. don't play their own music. They don't program their own music. It's yeah. mostly programmed out of a central programming company in Los Angeles. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's really unique now to find a radio station like that. So Cameron does that. He's been really involved in the um, safety programs in Tofino. He's an amazing man. And fortunately, we're lucky because he's a big fan of Music Fest. So he came and shot the documentary that we're going to I was going to say, how did that come about that he, he just showed well, up with cameras he's, last he's year? He's been a volunteer at the festival um, oh, okay. on our media crew and on our site crew, I think. Um, and so he just asked if if he could shoot one, and I said, of course you can. So awesome. we were lucky he came and shot one and mostly talked to our volunteers. Um, it turned out to be a wonderful thing, so you'll see that on the show today. Now, how many volunteers do you have every year? At we have Fest? about 1,300, um, and out of those 1,300 volunteers, there's about 40 to 50 different crews, Okay. and they basically run the festival, so they look after everything from environment to traffic to parking to stage crews and they all have unique t-shirts on so they're easily identifiable most of them do yeah yeah, yeah. Um, the way that we try to run the festival is is we want everybody to think that it takes no effort to put the festival on <laughs> we want them to it, it, yeah to think that when they walk onto that site that it's just kind of a happening thing and and there's not this underground organization going on and uh right. I think we've captured that. You know, we're quite proud of that, and our volunteers are really proud of the festival, and they all mm -hmm. they all own their own areas, which is part of uh, our success. Is that we have a whole bunch of people that really care about our event. You know, I think one of the things about the Vancouver Island Music Fest that struck me, and I found this out only a few years ago, is it's a nonprofit society. Yes, it is. Yeah, the the, the society that runs the festival is called the Comox Valley Folk Society. Okay. Uh, there's a board of directors, and mm -hmm. we follow all the rules of any nonprofit organization. So um, okay. it's also part of what makes the festival successful, I think, is that we're not driven by profit. We, right. we do have to make a little bit of money, mm -hmm. and we are very responsible financially, but our decisions are based more around how do we keep the, the mandate of the society and the uh, 
vibe of the festival, the importance of you know yeah. introducing new culture, um, okay. putting on a wonderful event that that includes all different parts of our community. Well, I think the culture part is also something that is very unique because that's one of my favorite things is I'll look through the program and pick out like all the different countries that the musicians have come from. And that's extraordinary. It is extraordinary. And I, I think it's actually had a lot to do with the growth of the Comox Valley, you know, mm -hmm. over the, the 22 years that, that we've been here, mm -hmm. my family's been here. We've, we've watched this place grow up, and, and uh, Music Fest was one of the first events that would draw people from all over the world into the Comox Valley. Mm -hmm. a, a number of the musicians have moved here over the years. And yeah. People that have come to the festival have ended up moving here. Um, so I'm awesome. really proud of that. I think we've had mm -hmm. quite a bit to do with that. Well, and the economic impact that you have on the community every year with all of these thousands of people, like, and it is now, it's like 10,000 people a day that come yeah. through the gates. Yeah. And that impact economically on the Comox Valley is massive. Yeah, it's six to seven million dollars a year that we bring into the valley. For such and a small, like, this is a fairly small community and to yeah. have that influx of cash is just amazing. Yeah, it is. It's a, we're, we're proud of that too, you know. We started off, I got involved um, the festival was running for two years, I think it was, mm. and I came as a performer okay. in the second year. Or actually, I came, in, I came for two years as a performer and uh, fell in love with the valley and moved up here and, um, from Victoria mm -hmm. and wanted to grow it into what it is now, which is, is like a world-class big festival but run with the feel of a small town right. kind of event, you know. Um, and it's been... It's been really rewarding to see the growth and to see the economic impact it's had on the Comox Valley. I think the other thing that stands out about this particular festival is the family environment. Like when you walk on that site, you don't see drunken hooligans anywhere. You see families and kids running around chasing each other and dancing and it's, it's a true family event. Absolutely, yeah, safety, the, the safety of uh, of our patrons and our volunteers and the treatment of people mm -hmm. draws a, a huge part of what we do. You know, we, mm -hmm. we talk about that at the staff level quite often. Are, are people going to feel safe? Are single moms going to feel safe bringing their kids here? Right. You know, we've had, we had a couple of years, um, probably going back about 15 years now, where we had some problems in our campground because mm. it had become a, a kind of a local party zone. And we've managed over the years to really clean that up. And, right. And uh, we want people to feel safe. We want mm -hmm. them to feel like they're, they can bring their kids and, and yeah. relax, you know. Well, That's, I like the kids zone. It is so neat and it's big. Like it's like this great big circus tent along the one side just down from the David Grierson stage. Yeah. And there is activities galore for the kids to do if they need a break from being with the music or in the sun and it's all shaded and it's fabulous. Yeah, and that's been run. Um, a woman named Diana Page, who's one of our longest standing volunteers. I won't oh, okay. say one of our oldest volunteers. <laughs> she wouldn't like that, but um, she's been running that since day one, and she does a magnificent job. This okay. year we're introducing a gigantic chess game with the great big chess pieces. Cool. We're gonna, our focus oh, next year is going to be, be really on trying to increase the surprise activities that people can have throughout the festival. Yeah. Um, so we're adding a couple things like that this year. And then next year we're gonna really look at that and go, okay, what what can we do at this event to make it feel less like some of the real commercial festivals where basically people are pulling up and sitting on their tailgates and drinking right. beer and yeah. going to the stage every now and then yeah. to watch somebody play. We want we want all these little wonderful little events for kids and families idea. to get their attention, you know, and give and them I something to the do. And I love the misting tent, especially on weekends where it's like two years ago, it was 30 degree weather yeah. all weekend long. And that misting tent had a light. You should maybe put some more misting We're tents. We're actually adding 10 of those this year. Are you? Yeah, all over awesome. the site. Awesome. Um, That'll be fabulous. We've had three in the past. Okay. And we're adding our site crew. Uh, one, of, one of our guys is actually driving down to Parksville today to get the the parts. <laughs> <laughs> So we're, we're, we're adding a lot more of those to the site, too. That's awesome. Well, that's good news. Yeah. That'll be fun. And, of course, the river is so close. 
And because we've had such a great snowpack this year, we should have some nice water yeah. levels in the Maybe river. on Sunday we'll fill the misting tent hoses with perfume to, <laughs> for the people in the campground. <laughs> <laughs> some dove soap or yeah. something. All right. So um, we are going to talk again after we see the documentary. Um, is there anything you want to say leading into the documentary? No, I don't think so. I think it pretty well speaks for itself. I'm, okay. I'm happy to, uh, to have had Cameron do that for us. All right. So now we're going to have a look at the documentary about Vancouver Island Music Fest. Without further ado, please um, put your hands together and help me welcome the Comaquay Cultural Society. Que la casa. Que la casa for la local outlay. On behalf of the Comox First Nation, I'd like to first welcome you here onto unceded Comox traditional territory. I'd also like to thank everyone for showing up today and for once again inviting the Comox First Nation and the Kumagoy dancers to come and open things for you. So I hope you have a great day. I hope that this weekend is a wonderful weekend for all of you. Gaila Kasla. Excuse me, miss. Are you having fun at the festival? Ladies, Hello. would you please kindly tell me your names? I'm Patsy. I'm Paula. And uh, how long have you both been volunteering? This is only my second year. Think? And my first year. Well, that's great. Do you think you might come back and do it again? I would sure hope so. It's been great fun. What do you love about it? The people, the music, spectacular, yeah. the interaction. And how about you? The atmosphere, the, the getting together of everybody, different people, different styles, different everything. The music's awesome and it's a really fun, safe place to be. Is there anything you might like to say to the organizers? or Just thanks for doing such a great job and thank you for organizing such a great event. Thanks for keeping us safe. Yes. You're very welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. My name is Delmar Van Kerrebrook. It's a uh, pretty common name. Generic is all hell. Uh, why are you here? Uh, I'm here mainly for uh, the free food that you get as a volunteer. But I think if you go probe a little bit deeper into it, I feel like uh, the amazing artists come all over from Canada because this festival really does support Canadian artists and uh, and introduces to you a lot of artists that you just normally wouldn't go to as a 23-year-old in a small town, right? Um, especially the classics. Like last year, you got Buddy Guy and stuff like that, and he brought this crazy young guitarist that you got to just wail on uh, his guitar, and you're like, wow, this is a bright future for what is essentially music that is taking a backstage to what is mainstream stuff. Like, it used to be like... Uh, have you ever watched the movie like Almost Famous? And uh, Stillwater Band is talking about like what good music is, and and they're a struggling band that's a little bit mediocre. But he's just like, what tends to be the best is what is most popular. And what was most popular back then was like the Beatles and the Rolling Stones and and all these crazy awesome bands. But nowadays you look at the top 40 and it's like uh, Fetty Wap or like Wiz Khalifa or just like Justin Bieber. So you volunteer here. I volunteer here. How many years? Uh, this is going to be my fifth year. Okay, will you come back? Yeah, I like the direction it's going. This uh, festival is uh, 
pretty cool because you get a crazy older crowd that comes here and you know uh, they sit in their lawn chairs and they they really take in the vibe of the music and you know probably understand like uh, some of the lyrics better than the younger crowd and the younger crowd comes here and in the daytime you see them walking around all awkward and stuff like that but the sun goes down and then they don't we're able getting judged so much for liking this funky old music and stuff like that and these really cool young bands and it just mishes these two crazy genres of people in together and you get this mingling that you don't get anywhere else yeah. and you need that you need the passing on of knowledge it sounds a little cliche when I when it comes out but I feel like it's uh, it's something that's being lost because like man people don't even hang out with their grandpas and stuff anymore but here you can do it all <clears throat> yeah you can hang out with other people's grandpa <laughs> darling side Tell me your names. I'm Rita. I'm Barb. I'm Ellen. And uh, <laughs> how, how long have you uh, individually been volunteering at the festival? 16 years. Okay. I think I'm close to 10 with a couple of gaps. And how about you? And four. Uh, I think this is my uh, What is your favorite thing about volunteering, would you say? Be able to volunteer and yeah. listen to music at the same time. <laughs> And where does the money go for the raffle? It all goes back to Music Festival. All right, here we are at the uh, Vancouver Island Music Festival, and we are with? Uh, Brian. Big oh. Brian, how long have you been uh, volunteering? Uh, this is 15 years, I think, 14 or 15 years. What would you say is your favorite thing about volunteering or being at the festival in general? I was actually thinking about this because you yesterday when you mentioned this, and yeah. I think it's uh, the community. Really, uh, the community of people that come here every year, old friends. There's just a common bond with musicians. There seems to be, I know, speaking for myself, there's this loss of community that seems to be happening on a regular basis. But this really brings a lot of good positive, uh, good positive influ influences, I think. M musicians are basically the philosophers of the world. And, uh, I just really appreciate the good, positive things that are sung about. It's, this place is always really safe. I've always felt that. It's, uh, you know, as you witnessed with the, the little guy there dancing at the fence, uh, pretty much sums up sort of the heart of the festival in a lot of ways. Do you find that you take this home with you when you leave here from this week? Do you take this energy home with you into your life? Absolutely. Oh yeah, absolutely. This is, uh, I, I sort of, plan a little bit of a holiday, a bit of a five-day holiday around this. I come down, I come down before I really start my volunteer stuff and uh, just to spend a couple of days with the guy, you know, the construction crew, everybody, all the stuff that goes into this, it's good to see the people come back and do it year after year after year and yeah, it's really nice, it's special, it's been really special to me. What would you suggest for someone who wanted to volunteer who has never volunteered here before? I would suggest to come down and give it a try. I, I remember I got sort of a little coerced into coming down here. Uh, haven't been involved in stuff like this for a while. And I just came down because a friend of mine came from back east. He volunteered here and he didn't want to do it alone. He didn't know anybody from here. So I said, okay, I'll do it. And I've been hooked ever since. That was 14 or 15 years ago. So, and I look forward to it every year. It's, Will you come uh, back next year? Oh, absolutely. Like, do you have a plan to be here for the next 10 years? If, if I'm up right and alive, I'll be here. Uh, there's no doubt, you know. My wife and I both do it. And uh, we, as I said, you know, we look for it every year. Is there anything you'd like to say to Doug or any of the other organizers? Absolutely. You know, uh, to Doug and all the organizers, way too many of them to list, but I really thank them for putting this on every year. And uh, it's been a really, really good event every year, and they always seem to be able to to, to kick it up a notch every year. It's really, I really appreciate anybody who can uh, 
put this kind of event on that's family orientated, friendly, safe. Yeah, it's really good. Really appreciate it. All right, here we are having fun at the Vancouver Island Music Festival. And what is your name? My name is Barbara Kelly and I've been the coordinator, supervisor for Information Booth Lost and Found for 21 years. Wow. And a volunteer before that. How many years has the festival been running? I don't know. I forget. That's all right. After that much time, you're not, totally expected, to, you're not expected to remember. Totally forget. What is your favorite thing about volunteering, would you say? And what is your name? Can I know your name? I'm Donna Zeiner. Hi. Hi. Uh, what's your favorite thing about volunteering? Oh, uh, coming back and being on the same crew every year. And yeah. coming back and Donna and I have been on the same crew for what, 20 years and, at least? And uh, watching all the people come in and talking yeah. to people and uh, helping people get what they need. That's great. But uh, they keep getting lost. <laughs> yeah, but then they keep getting found. They keep yeah. getting found. Yeah. Uh, at 21 years is a long time. What keeps you coming back? The people, the ambiance, the music, the music, the eclectic. It's never the same ever. Every year has its own vibe, its own ambiance. It's so unique. This is the family for this weekend. A lot of people I see every year on this weekend. The other crews, the other coordinators, and. Some people that come every year too. Oh, it's like a little magic another world. year. Yeah, kind of just for this weekend. Life. Yeah. Absolutely. We're here backstage at the Vancouver Island Music Festival 2016, and it looks like you are getting special treatment. I don't know. Well, this is this is what we do in Cousin Harley. You know, we uh, we groom each other like gibbon monkey. Uh, how are you enjoying the festival? Yeah, I'm doing. It's wonderful. It's absolutely fantastic. The weather was fantastic. The shows were great. Thumbs up. And I'm getting an awesome haircut. Uh, have you played before? At this festival? Yeah, this is uh, probably our fifth or sixth time. Okay, I haven't been too many times, so, uh, and I'm, I'm assuming you'd love to come back. Absolutely, always. Uh, anything you'd like to say to the organizers? Have us back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. And, and hire Keith for a full-time barber. Yeah, bring in a barber chair. That'd bring be in a handy. Barber. Yeah, Keith needs a barber chair next time. How many years have you volunteered at the festival? I've had two. Three fingers. And why do you do it? Because we love to make people happy. I'm so happy. This water's great. There you go. <laughs> and we get to meet nice people and nice performers, and it's amazing. And listen to good music? Oh, yeah. Nothing oh, yeah. but. And dance our butts off. How did you get involved in volunteering? The Ethernet connected us. So you would suggest uh, to other people that they could volunteer and they might enjoy it as well? Yeah, yes. definitely. But the water crew is very competitive to get on to. Why? Because it's the best job. Yeah, I heard that. Because you get to meet so many people? And you get to walk around? Yep, you get to meet a lot of nice people and shake a lot of hands and see a lot of smiling faces. Technically, you're saving lives. We think so. Yeah. Do you want to say anything to the organizers? Thanks for a great year. It's been yeah. a pleasure being back. Thank you. Manager with Vancouver Island Music Fest. My name is Marcy Jaster and I'm the operations manager with Vancouver Island Music Fest. And it's my understanding that both of you are part of the actual creation of the festival. Is that accurate? The creation. <laughs> I guess the day, day to day and the actual putting together the festival, yes. There's three of us on the executive, which is Doug Cox, Marcy, and myself. And then we have uh, three other employees usually working. How long have you both been involved? 
I've been involved 19 years. And I've been involved 18 years. Wow. So really, uh, one of the comments I got was that it's like a family. Most definitely. Definitely. What do you think it is about it that makes it that way? I personally think that a lot of it is is that when you're you're building a festival, which is sort of my area of the job when we're setting it up and tearing it down, that it's almost like war bonding, you know, it's crisis driven, it's um, helping each other out, you're always trying to work together to accomplish the goal, so I think, and then throughout the year when you're creating and working together, you're always thinking about the festival and how you're going to work together when you get there. How much of the year is devoted to the festival in your in your time? Twelve months of the year is devoted to the festival. Ten months of the year, more so. Yes. I think we have about two months of down, quiet downtime with with work during those two months. But do you even get to see the bands that play? No. 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 <laughs> no. Hey, actually, we, we, we got, did Doug, Doug mm -hmm. brought us up on stage for Alison Krauss. That's true. He said, turn off your radios, ladies, you're watching it. We sat down side stage, and um, in the second song, both looked over and saw billowing black smoke from the campground. And I went, well, that was fun, bye. See you later. <laughs> we have to go now. Yeah. So, no, we don't. Yeah. <laughs> we don't. We don't expect to. No. Yeah. You know, we try and make concerted efforts. I, I highlight things that I'd like to see and I say, okay, I'm not going to be available at three o'clock on Saturday because I'm going to this state. Never happens. Yeah. Or else you get there and it's like, oh, Crestland, Crestland. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the volunteers, uh, for a volunteer that might be watching this little documentary that we're doing, what would you like to say to the volunteers? Thank you. We couldn't do it without them. No. Yeah. It's uh an amazing dedication and we have volunteers that come back year after year and just makes our job easier because they know what's happening. Awesome. Well, thank you for this. Uh, we really appreciate it and I know that uh, everybody that I talked to, about 60 people all said the same thing. They're extremely grateful for the experience. So thank you. Thanks. Okay, gentlemen, here we are. All the sound and everything's working. All right, excellent. First of all, can you please introduce yourselves and tell me how long you've been volunteering and working here? I've been volunteering for six years. Five. I think this is my sixth. And Ian brought me in five or six years ago and uh, take a couple of weeks off work and make this happen. I'm Ian. I think this is my 10th or 11th year. Um, I started out just a regular volunteer on a crew and I have worked my way up and now I'm the coordinator for the site crew, hunters and gatherers. I'm interested to know because everybody that I talk to says it's like being in a family. Can you share with me a little bit about why you love it and what this is to you? Well, I can actually more than anybody right now. I'll tell you something. This is the people that that are within this festival are our family. Like I went through a tough thing of life, and they just bailed me and protected me. It was wonderful. They are family. Music this family is family. And the family goes beyond the festival. It's we get to know each other here. We're all here for a good time. And when we meet each other out in the community over the year, um, we know each other and we help each other out. And it's, it's and when, when it comes to putting this together, it's teamwork. It's fun. It's hard work, but it's fun. That's what I want to talk about. How hard is the work? It's <laughs> crazy. It's frustrating. Sometimes they send you on tasks that in your head make no sense, but the girls have got They've got a plan. They've got a plan, so you're biting your lip going, okay, I'm going to bring this stupid piece of yeah. crap to sight, and 
hopefully there's a use for it. And then you find out how important it is because it puts this together, yeah. that together. Five years ago, a teenager showed up at our site and well, he wanted, yeah, yeah, yeah and he wanted to help. Arms, like cooked spaghetti? Yeah, so our site crew got a cabana boy. <laughs> this is the cabana boy. He was our apprentice. Yeah. For better or for worse. Yeah. Good one too. And what's the essence of what they're teaching you? I'm learning so many lessons just from being around them. How to be bad. <laughs> for, <clears throat> for me, I don't know. Well, just, I guess what kept me coming back more than anything was working with these guys. You know, we do, we do the whole week beforehand, we do the whole week afterwards. And as a little noodle armed kid, <laughs> That was my first experience with like actually like yeah, know, right. just growing up. Yeah, it's they all, added, they it's all grow up. Um, it's my first experience with actually like working, and I thought it was oh, it was great. Like it was it was like a holiday from my usual pretty easy life to come here, work my ass off with a bunch of people who I all like. This festival rocks. It's number one. And what I always like to do when I see Marcy stressed right out because she's got so much going on in her mind. Marcy, I love you. He does that a lot. Marcy, I love you. <laughs> With your bodies, particularly your thumbs, can you express how you feel about Music Fest? 500 thumbs up. <laughs> and then 502. Yeah. So, okay. Plus these six. four. Gentlemen, thank you very much. 506. I appreciate your time. This cool. is the closest I've ever been to thumbs. the trailer park, boys. So. So I'm standing here with Doug Cox. Hi, Doug. Hello. We're talking about the Vancouver Island Music Festival. And my question for you is, probably a lot of people already know this, but how long have you been involved and what is your role? I am the artistic director, executive producer, great big title. Um, <laughs> and I think this is gonna be, this is the 21st year. It's either 20 or 21 for me. I can't remember exactly what year it is. When you began, did you envision that it would go the way that it has? Yeah, to a degree I did. Um, I, I worked for the Edmonton Folk Festival when I was a, a lot younger um, for a couple of years and my whole goal when I moved to Vancouver Island was to always come and try and create 
uh, a version of the old Edmonton Folk Festival, which was kind of a, a smaller version, but, but uh, with great music, but with a small town feel. And um, I honestly never thought I'd do it for as long as we've been doing it, but uh, it's, it's a good place to be stuck. <laughs> what does the future of the festival look like? Another 21 years? Um, I don't know. If you would have asked me that five or ten years ago, I would have said absolutely. But I'm not sure that the, the festival world is changing so much right now um, that I'm not sure if, if the festival will survive another 20 years or not. And, and uh, I don't know if that's even a bad thing. It's, it's uh, served its purpose for our community in a huge way for years and years. I certainly hope it does. But I'm not 100% sure that it will at this point. On the note of community, I interviewed a lot of people uh, that volunteer and have been for many years, some 17, 18 years. Um, what is it about volunteering at the festival that you think uh, draw, draws these people in for such an experience? Well, it's not very often that you can do anything that involves such a large group of like-minded people that are donating their time to an experience and um, you know it's it's a pretty magical community of people we we see the people there that have been there for a long time once a year a lot of times because people come from out of town too and it's it's like a big family reunion every year um, and you become very close to those people some of them you think of as your best friends even though you only see them once a year you know and it's a pretty magical experience to to be involved in your community that way. There, a lot of folks don't have that opportunity very often. I, I think that's really a big part of it. What would you, uh, if you had the opportunity and say all the volunteers were in a room watching this right now, what would you say to them? Teach your children <laughs> would be the first thing I would say, I guess. Um, I really think that volunteerism is changing now for some reason and it may be that the internet has distanced us even more from each other than we used to be, but it is changing. Um, and we, we have some second generation volunteer crew coordinators and volunteers. Um, I would hope that the spirit would carry on into our, our next generation of, of kids and our grandkids as well. In terms of the, uh, again, the community um, and the people that you've chosen to bring to the festivals, um, is that a, a, one of your favorite things? Do you, do you love to pick the bands that are Absolutely. coming? Absolutely, yeah, it is my favorite thing, I think. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge music fan. Um, and there's nothing more exciting than watching a performer that you've booked that nobody's heard of come and just turn on the whole festival. You know, that, that's a really great feeling. It's also a great feeling to have a performer come to our festival and discover the magic of our community as well. Um, that's my favorite thing too. So yeah, I, I love that. In terms of uh, the, the festival site, is it still functioning as the, as the best site? Was there ever a possibility that it might move? Well, if it moves, it, if, we, if we change sites, we would change the festival drastically. Um, we've, we've, I think we've figured out the mathematics of, of how many people we can fit on that site in the most comfortable way without uh, lessening the experience. I know it's too big for some people. Um, but my hope was always you could get around any of the stages you wanted to, especially during the day, and, and still experience that as an intimate setting. So um, I think we figured that part out. Our, our site has six extraordinary different settings that almost feel like you're in a different place uh, as you move from stage to stage. And I think that's part of the magic of our, of our festival is our site. So we've talked about that um, for numerous years because of lack of local municipal government support um, where there's other communities close by that are very interested in supporting us um, and also because there's always talk in North America no matter what you do you always talk about making things bigger right yeah. and we don't really want to make it bigger in terms of the number of people that come because it would change the experience but we also have to pay for it um, and that's something we have to think about too so Changing the site would be a huge, dramatic move. Um, I can't see that we would do that right now, but we might have to in the future, so. What would you like to say to people who haven't been to the festival to entice them to come? Well, I hope that they, that they would come just to experience the, the quality of the uh, multi-diverse lineup, to experience the, what happens within our community, 
both the music community and our, our community of the Comox Valley and Vancouver Island. Um, it's one of the few events I know where the bikers and the hippies and the hipsters and the older folks and the professional people and the corporate people all come and sit down in a field together for the weekend. And the kids. And the kids. Um, and that's pretty amazing because people come talk to their neighbors and there's not a lot of events that happen like that. That being said, I know it's not for everybody. It's not a rock festival. Um, you can't come there and just expect to party your face off. You know, it's a little bit more conscious than that and I think a little bit more reasonable than that. So if you want to come really experience it, that's great, but it's not for everyone, you know. Um, we, we always want more people to come, for sure. Cool, thank you. Thanks, Cameron. Cumberland Hotel on Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland has live music with a different band every Saturday night. Variety is the spice of life. A half rack of ribs, six wings, a baked potato, and a salad. Now back to Northwest Music with Mary Ruth Harris and Doug Cox. Welcome back to Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. That was a documentary about the Vancouver Island Music Fest prepared by Cameron Dennison who is, what's the name of his documentary company? Strong Heart Productions. Strong Heart it's Productions. Yeah. So, Doug, when you watch that documentary, what stands out for you? Well, for me, the most interesting thing is always to see the festival through other people's eyes, right? Because mm -hmm. for, for those of us that run it, um, it's our, it's, we, we wake up every day and we live and breathe the festival all year round. Yeah. So I love to hear other people's stories and um, to see who he chose to interview. Okay. Um, to hear from the volunteers mm -hmm. and what, what their stories are. Um, mm -hmm. I love that part because yeah. it's uh, everybody that comes to the event has their own experience and you'll hear about things that have happened that you don't know anything about and right. you'll hear about groups of people that have come and gotten together there every year for 10 or 15 years you might yeah. not even know any of them you know yeah. and it's a, that's <laughs> a pretty incredible thing. It so, is. Um, the young gentleman who was interviewed in the documentary, I'm, I'm not even sure what his name was, um, but I loved what he had to say about it because he was so in tune with, with what goes on at Music right. Fest. Um, and I, I, loved, I loved that part of the documentary. I think the one fellow that was interviewed that stands out for me was the gentleman with the long gray hair right. with the yeah. New Zealand sweatshirt. Yeah. And he was um, talking about how he plans his vacation around coming to the festival and he comes prior to the festival and he hangs out with the construction crews. Right. Like people yeah. don't realize, but the crews start 
a week before the a festival, before, setting absolutely. up the city yeah. of Vancouver Island Music Fest. And then he stays through the weekend, volunteers, and then has a couple another days after the fact yeah. to enjoy the valley. Yeah, and for those, uh, for those people, the festival is actually the setup. Yes. Um, that we, we get a, a, a crew of, a, I, I'd have to guess, but I think it's around 130 people okay. that show up, and they work for a whole week yeah. before the festival, bringing everything onto that site that you mm -hmm. see when you get there. And their experience is they get back together with this group of people that are their closest friends. Yeah. Um, even though they might only see them once a year or for mm -hmm. that week time period, they all take that time off work. And there's a big kitchen that's set up. So we awesome. feed them three meals a day and yep. all that kind of stuff. <laughs> their experience is the setting up of the festival. Right. And then the festival happens. Now, all the other people start to show up and all right. the campers arrive. We have about 4,000 campers. Yeah. Um, and the event happens, and while the event happens, you see those guys all hanging out around the site, just enjoying and watching what they've created, right? Yes. Fixing whatever needs to be fixed. Yep. Um, and then everybody leaves, and they, they all come back and, and tear, it tear all down. down. And, and it usually <laughs> takes um, Cresslin Broadhagen, who is our production manager, and Marcy okay. Jaster are usually mm -hmm. the last two people on the site. Okay. And they are usually done by Thursday. Okay. And they go around the last day with uh, sticks with spikes on them and pick up every single cigarette butt they can find and awesome. all the glass that they can find because yeah. um, it's a field full of horses normally, right? Right. Yeah. So we slowly lose people after the festival. Yeah. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing to watch. Usually on Monday, everybody gets up and they all <laughs> help out and talk about how wonderful it was and then they all yeah. start to disappear. And then yeah. On Tuesday, there's less, and on Wednesday, there's less, and on Thursday, it's like the last <laughs> people. Oh. It's the hardest day for sure. Yeah. You know? um, well, I think with the with the music festival, one of the great things, and it's now well into its beyond its second decade, heading into its third decade, and it's the family feeling. It's the army of volunteers that come together to make it happen, and then the musicians that are coming literally from around the globe to participate and yeah. add that layer of culture and music and the inspiration from each other. Oh, that's one of my favorite things is on the David Gerson stage where they all collaborate. I think that's on Saturdays that that happens. Saturday where, and Sunday. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is amazing where you take people, and I don't know how you come up with this, but you take musicians that have nothing in common and you throw them on stage together and they jam. And it is so it's neat fun. to Yeah, watch. that's my favorite. My favorite part is the guy who gets to program the festival is, is setting up those collaborations. Yeah. Um, I especially like it because quite often people will come and play at the festival together for the first time and then they'll go off and make records together or yes. they'll tour together. And you watched over the years all this stuff that happens because of the festival. Yes. You know, there's... There's marriages that happen, people that meet there. There's probably been some babies conceived there over the years. We have our uh, our second generation of volunteers now in yes. quite a few cases that are yeah. awesome. they're, they're, they grew up at the festival and they're now taking over and running crews themselves. Yeah. And it's uh, I can't stress enough that that's really what the festival is about, mm -hmm. and that's why we will continue to succeed when you see gigantic festivals like Pemberton that just crashed, yeah. crash and burn because they don't have that spirit of, to, to me, what a festival actually is. Right. You know, every year we have uh, headliners that people are really excited about or not excited about, right? Mm -hmm. Like this year we've got Amy Lou Harris and the Bare Naked Ladies. And Phenomenal. Rita Coolidge and uh, yeah. I'm sure I'm forgetting somebody. I oh, know I'm forgetting hundreds, somebody. hundreds actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But that, that's, you know, people yeah. will say, remember that year or remember yeah. that year or remember yeah. that year. But the stories usually don't really have anything to do with who's on stage. That's right. You know, it's more yeah. about the experience. Yeah. That's what's going to keep us going. Is yes. that, um, that feeling of ownership mm -hmm. by the community right. is really, really what it's all about. You know? You're watching Northwest Music. I'm Mary Ruth Harris. Normally we are in the Campbell River studio and Doug is my co-host for that. But today we've turned the tables and I've been interviewing him about the Vancouver Island Music Fest and this amazing documentary put together by Cameron Dennison of Strong Heart Documentary Productions. Productions. <laughs> So, and um, some of the guests that we've had on Northwest Music have been really extraordinary. Like we came out of the gate just 
Like Absolutely, a yeah, shot yeah, out it's of a gun. exciting. Um, we had Jim Burns, who is yeah. was airing just before this one, so That's he right. was all through May and part of June. Yeah, and before that, we had Drew Gonzalez mm -hmm. from Cobo Town. And coming up in August, after this run is done, is Bill Bourne. We have Bill Bourne, Bourne from Alberta, yeah. yeah, who's a phenomenal guitar player. Yeah. It's really exciting. It's, uh, it's uh, been my, my dream to do a show like this again. I used to do the show down in Victoria called mm -hmm. Sitting In, and we, had, we did 70 episodes. And, and when I look back at it now, um, a number of the performers we had are gone, and mm -hmm. it was a really cool show. And, yeah. and we're starting to build this right now. And it's exciting because it is. Uh, it's very rare for any musician now to be given that much time on TV to come play and just talk about what they do. Yes. And, you know, everybody has to do their their promotional videos, and mm -hmm. this is just people sitting around playing music. Yeah. It's a it's a rare thing. It just doesn't it, happen that. I still anymore. get chills when I think about our interview with Jim Burns. He was so open with us. Yeah. About yeah. his accident and about his growth as a musician, as an actor and as a family man and, and yeah. as a human being. And it was just extraordinary. And then for him to share some of the music he shared with us, it was I just get chills thinking good, about it. Good. Well there's gonna be <laughs> there's gonna be a lot more to come. Yeah. We're gonna have some a lot of exciting people to come and play for us. And you know, this is full circle for me. Do you know why? Why? Because my very first interview as a young journalist was you. With me, yeah. <laughs> Nearly 25 years ago. Oh my God. And we were, I was, we were both, well, I was seven <laughs> and you were six. <laughs> yeah, <you're laughs> I remember yes. that. It was, we both had these Mickey Mouse ears on, right? <laughs> And we were at Beacon Hill Park in Victoria. That's right. And you had your old red pickup, and you had the tailgate down. Right. And we were sitting on the tailgate. <laughs> you had your guitar. And I was, I even remember what I was wearing. I was wearing a black mock turtleneck and a brown suede blazer. Wow. And I was holding the Canadian Borderline CD, which you had just that released. That was my first CD. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was... That was nearly 25 years ago. Yeah, I know it's funny. It's uh, <laughs> one of my favorite cartoons is a, a picture of a of a senior getting out of a VW bus. It's all painted up, all hippie like, <laughs> and under the bottom it says, "What a long, strange trip it's been." <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> I know. When you think back over the last 25 years, for you and for me, it's just like that yeah, caption. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I think about the the luck I've had as a musician and how I've been blessed to tour all over the world and, and uh, play with amazing people from different cultures, yeah. and some famous, some not, you know, whatever, but um, to have had that life mm -hmm. and to have had the life of, of doing the festival, this festival for 20 some years. And being um, grounded being here. Being grounded, having a family that, yes. that's been very supportive and stayed yeah. behind and supported all the stuff. And a growing been. family. How many children now? Well, I've got one grandchild and another one on the way, four kids. Um, so I've been really lucky because mm -hmm. it's just been an, an amazing journey, you know, and continues yeah. to be. And mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a new chapter because the music industry has changed so much and the festival world is changing dramatically right now. Yeah. Um, and the baby boomers are getting old, <laughs> <laughs> which is changing everything as well, right? Yes. So it's, uh, yeah, it's it an is. interesting time that way. Well, I'm really looking forward to what's coming up on Northwest Music in the fall. We are not telling you anything, so you're going to have to tune in and see who we have lined up for guests for September, October, November, December. Yeah. And it's going to be a blast. Yeah. So thanks so much for letting me interview you thank today. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to Cameron Dennison for preparing that documentary on the Vancouver Island Music Fest. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. And thank you as well to the Cumberland Hotel, where we are today, for, yes. for supporting the show as well. Yes. And you've been watching Northwest Music. We are coming to you from the Cumberland Hotel in Cumberland. And we will see you soon.
Northwest Music, presented by the Cumberland Hotel, located on Dunsmuir Avenue in Cumberland. They have live music every Wednesday and Saturday, pool tables, darts, and a menu with everything from chicken to burgers to fish and chips to ribs and wings. Thank you for watching Northwest Music.